Hey everyone, uh, seems like I'm an odd layer from the previous three French speakers. So you have to adapt to my accent. <laughs> right, so I'm a, a researcher from Ningxia, uh, Hien, and uh, so I'll take this opportunity to present some of our research uh, in our group. So basically we are the group called Link Media, and we are based at uh, Hien, and the group is headed by the first guy, Guillaume, and will be soon headed by the second guy. And we have some vision guys like I have listed. And we are also having guys doing other resources of multimedia like uh, uh, text, uh, like audio stuff, speech stuff. And basically we are a joint uh, group of people from CNRS, Inkia, from INSA, from like IHISA. So what we do then, what we do, we basically do multimedia. We do images, we do uh, like uh, audios, speeches, and we want to extract some information from these multiple resources of data, and we want to analyze this representation, and we want to link them, we want to make sense of them, we want to really understand what happens in the structure of the data. And so let's be more specific. So basically, we are doing something from the low level to the high level. We want to, this, like first, to extract all the distributors for multiple resources. We want to do supervised learning for detection, for segmentation. We also want to uh, do retrieval, which is also something that we have been done for quite a long time in our group. We have been doing this kind of stuff, and so basically we have three research access in our group. The first is low-level things that I have discussed. Second thing is the semantic structures, which we have been doing for detection segmentation. And then we also want to develop tools for analytics, for search, for linking and exploration. So our group has this uh, been funded by the federal team projects, and uh, this is just an illustration from 2015 until 19. And uh, so basically, I'm gonna then highlight some of the research in our group that we have been done. So the first is the group testing framework that uh, we have proposed like already for many years because uh, it's like a continual work. We have, been, we have researchers continue working on that. Uh, me, myself, I'm personally involved in the first paper of this work. So basically, this idea is from the uh, group testing framework, which was originally uh, during the Second World War II when the US ar armies want to recruit some soldiers. They want to do the civilist test. And then because the test was quite extensive, and then what they do is they, they can only test each individual. This is unrealistic. Then they put several individuals plot together and then test again that. If it is positive, then it means that at least one person is having this positive blood within this group. Otherwise, it's all negative. And so we kind of apply this idea in the image retrieval where we have created this kind of group representation by aggregating several image descriptors together so that when we have a query, we could query against this group representation rather than the whole database. And we hope that in this way, we could really accelerate uh, the searching uh, speed. So basically, our algorithm, we, what we have designed is, uh, as you can see here, this, this graph, this uh, plot graph. So basically, uh, our, gram, our algorithm works particularly good when the uh, dimensionality is high, so we don't really suffer from the curse of that dimensionality. And also, when, in fact, uh, when the database is getting like, bigger and the dimension getting higher, our performance is getting like, really good. So that's the first work I want to present. The second work is uh, about what we do uh, to do these cross-modality things, because we have different resources of data. We have data from the, like a text, and we have data of images, and then we want to extract some info representation so that this representation can be combined from different resources. And to do that, we have designed some work about this kind of uh, dual network, and then they share some parameters, and uh, so basically this is some other works in our group uh, researchers, and so. By doing that, we could have this joint representation, and then we could do some things to further improve the recognition, accuracy, or precision. And uh, 
Then, uh, well, that's basically the, some group highlights, and then it's uh, what I do particularly. Uh, first, I do retrieval, what I just said, that uh, I have been doing research in retrieval for many years, and then uh, I do object detection. So object detection is basically you want to detect the both to detect the bounding box and give the label of the object in the images. So it's a combined recognition uh, localization task. And uh, so particularly what I want to do is weekly supervised learning, which has already been, been discussed by previous speakers. And because we know that if you, uh, deep learning is really strong for like fully supervised learning where you have to annotate the data to train object detector or even to annotate in the pixel level to train segmentation uh, model. But if we uh, think of what we have learned as a kid, when we learn something, our parents simply point to an image to point that, okay, this is a banana and this is apple. We are not given with any masks or object bonding boxes to tell that this apple is here or this, this, this banana is here, but we just point with probably just one point or just image level labels we can learn. So then this makes weekly supervised learning is quite intriguing here. So basically to see that uh, supposedly we have the training data set where we only have the image label labels. See, we have the motorbikes in the image, but we don't know where exactly it is. But still, we want to train a very robust object detector. And uh, so I think that's what I'm really interested in. So basically, I'll give two wor uh, highlight works of myself. The first is uh, to using some transfer learning uh, uh, methods to train this uh, de uh, detector. So first, because we have, uh, if you consider now the public data sites that uh, with fully annotated, like pixel level annotated data sites, we probably have like a 10K images annotated at most if you consider public data site. And then can we use these uh, 10K images being fully annotated to predict some new classes which we might only have the image level labels? And so what we want to point here is that uh, in order to do this transfer, the first obvious thing you can think of is, is surely the appearance, because for example here, you have the uh, pixel level annotation for cat, and then you probably think of, because bear is, looks sort of similar to cat, then you can use some sort of information to transfer between cat and bear. But on the other hand, there's another information that has not been explored quite uh, largely is the stuff thing. Stuff is basically defined as something that has no certain specific extent, like water, like uh, grassland. It basically has any uh, like shape. It's really related to the perspective, or it's related to the containers. For example, you put the water in the container, then it has the shape of the container. So this is some stuff classes. So if you can count off the stuff classes, the number of the stuff classes are really lim limited probably just 50 or something at most. But on the other hand, they could have hundreds of thousands of object classes. So then imagine that if you have this kind of cat image and bear image, and that you know that for some prior knowledge, they both quite frequently occur with uh, the stuff classes like trees, like grasses. And then whenever you can detect this stuff class in your new image, like the, the trees and, and the uh, grass, then this less chance that the object in the middle of this image would not be like, 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 like a monitor like or something. It, it would be more like the bear rather than like a monitor. So this is some work I want to discuss. And uh, another work is more like application. And so imagine we, have, we want to do something about person detection and counting. But if you want to do counting, basically you have like thousand people in the images and then it's really hard to draw the bonding box. So what you can do is you simply just annotate each head center. That's your own annotation. And uh, can we still change some detector to detect the bonding box and the count number? And that's some work I have been done. And uh, so basically here it shows some example that we have been uh, tested. So basically you can see that with simply point annotation, we could still produce some bonding boxes which are quite accurate. And if you can consider the uh, uh, image, the, the, the person count in the image is still like quite close with our prediction by the, the last column. And uh, so basically this is the objective of our, the next period of our group. And we want to continue investigating about 
these things about uh, retrieval, about uh, machine learning, but uh, also we want to specifically focus on adversarial learning, we want to focus on help human make sense of the words, this kind of thing, and me, myself, I'm gonna uh, continue working on object detection, segmentation, more in weekly supervised manner, and also I'm working on some sort of low-level image processing stuff, basically to predict the depth and the shading or illumination from the images. Uh, all right, so that's basically the presentation of my thanks.